My name is Gail Strawn and I was born in 1954 in Roseville, Michigan. A month before I was born, my parents bought a new home that had two bedrooms, an unfinished upstairs, and a garage, and a basement for $11,000. I lived there until I was 19 and got married. And when I went to school, it was a few blocks from my home and I walked to school. And for kindergarten, we only went a half a day. We did not go a full day. And we didn't have to learn a lot in kindergarten. Kindergarten was just fun. Uh, my favorite thing was playing dolls. We could play dolls in the dollhouse. We didn't have to learn anything except our phone number and our address. And every day we had graham crackers and milk and we had to bring in two cents every day for milk. After school and in the summer, we mainly played outside. The only time we played inside is for, it was raining and then it was going to someone's house to play a game of Monopoly. When we wanted to play with our friends, we never called them on the phone. We always just went to their back door, we called out their name, and they would come. When it was time to go home, our parents would start turning the porch light on and off, or when the street lights went off, that's when everyone had to go inside. We were allowed to walk to the school playground and play. We never worried about anybody kidnapping us or harming us or anything like that. When I was in school, we never had drills for in case a shooter or anybody came. We just had to drill. If there was a tornado, we would just go in the hallway and stand against the wall. It was a very simple lifestyle. And in 1964, my uncle got a colored TV. And in those days, that was a huge event because nobody had a colored TV because they were very expensive. And so when he got his colored TV, he invited us over to watch Bonanza in color. And that was a big event for us. In elementary school, we had delicious hot lunches. And I think they only cost like 35 cents but everything was homemade. Homemade mashed potatoes, homemade chicken, homemade pizza. It was like going to a restaurant. When I started first grade, they had more students than they had classrooms. So I started to go to school in a Lutheran church. And then eventually the janitor cleared out his storage room and they moved our class into his storage room. It was very small, but we, we still had a good time. And then for the other classes, they brought in some trailers and put them on part of the playground. And so some of the kids went to school in a trailer. Um, eventually they added on classrooms to the school. And the school I went to was Kaiser Elementary and it's still there today. When I was in junior high, which now you call middle school, we had a party line. We did not have any cell phones. Everything was landline but some people had a party line where we shared our phone line with another family. So by then, I was too old. I didn't go to the back door and call my friends. I would call them on the phone. But if I picked up the phone and I heard somebody talking, we'd have to hang up and wait and then call back at another time. And then when we had to do a report, we did not have Google. We did not have computers. We had to go to the library and check out books or use World Book Encyclopedia. That was like a big thing if you had a set of encyclopedias at your home, which we did. And then you either had to hand write out your report or type it, which took forever to do it either way. I attended Roseville High School and I was very active there. I was president of the Ecology Club. I was in Spanish Club and I always helped work on the homecoming floats. Our floats were very elaborate and our class won first place every year. And we made our flowers out of Kleenex. We tied a little string around them and fluffed them out and painted them. And they were very beautiful floats. By the time I was in high school, my dad thought it was a good idea for me to pull weeds on the weekend, which I hated pulling weeds on the weekends. So I decided when I was 16, I would get a job and work on the weekends to get myself out of pulling the weeds. So I applied at a local mom and pop grocery store and I got hired. And not only did it keep me from pulling weeds on the weekends, but that is where I also met my future husband as he was a stock boy there. I graduated high school in June of 1972 and I got married in September of 1973. Our first child was born in 1976 and her second child was born in 1981. My original plan was to go to college and become a teacher, but 
after I thought about it, I realized I really wanted to be a mother more and I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. So I never pursued my teacher uh, education, but strangely, both of my children turned out to be teachers, so that made me very happy. As the kids were growing up, we were very busy with all their activities, but as they got older, I found I had more time to garden, which started to pique my interest. Um, I didn't really know a lot about gardening, but I was in a garden club that disbanded and I started to think we really should have a garden club. So I started a group called the Friendly Gardeners and we met every month and we have professional speakers come in and teach us all about gardening and we had plant exchanges and we also had garden walks where we go to each other's house and see the gardens. Well, I started hosting an annual garden walk probably almost 20 years ago and then uh, I was nominated for a beautification award for the city of Sterling Heights. Well, we have won 17 beautification awards and two of them were the best of the best, meaning the beautification committee thought of all the entries, our house was the best of the best. So that's something I was very proud of. And it's kind of ironic because now I really enjoy weeding. I do, I find it very relaxing and I love my garden. and. Uh, I met probably the best husband I could ever find because I wanted to get out of weeding, which is really just very ironic. But I'm really happy with my garden and my husband, and we have been married 50 years. <laughs>